how micro and optoelectronics lead to transparent and paper transistors. Elvira Fortunato, Universidade Nova de Lisboa, Portugal. On November the 9th, 1989, I was working at the new University of Lisbon as a teaching assistant. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, the Falling Walls Association, uh, Foundation, sorry, to invite me and to allow me to share with you some of our results, the last results that we have done in our laboratory. So, I will start with the title that was already uh, presented, and maybe I will. I, I need to start with a question. What is transparent electronics? Maybe we need to learn a little bit about what it is. And in fact, this is quite simple. So we just need to combine optical transparency with electrical conductivity. In fact, it's easy, but maybe it's not so easy. Let's, let's see. So this is for ex an example of conducting materials. This is metals. But as you can see, they are not transparent. So if we are looking for transparent electronics, we need to have something else. So we need to have maybe the optical properties of our uh, window glasses. By combining optical properties of insulators and electrical properties of metals, maybe we reach transparent electronics. And this is what we have done. But maybe we can say that the inventor or the inventor of transparent electronics was Steven Spielberg. And in fact, in 2004, with this nice movie called Minority Report, where Tom Cruise manipulates all this information, at that time, this was science fiction, really. But now we can say that it became reality. And also, in some way, like if you remember the work of Julio Vernes, maybe for science, science fiction is quite important because we can think in huge things, and we, scientists, we are able, after some, uh, some work, to, to realize and to make the dreams reality. So this is one of the first prototypes using transparent electronics. This is a, as you can see, this is a laptop where the screen is fully transparent. But the picture is not uh, quite nice because it's quite difficult for a camera to take a picture for something that is transparent. So here, the next one, it's a, a movie that is available uh, at YouTube. Also, this is a prototype from Samsung, where they develop windows or displays that are fully transparent. And besides having transparency, they are, for example, like that one, is a touch screen. So simultaneously, you have a huge window glass that works like a, a display, but simultaneously has a, a touch screen capabilities, or even a window. Or maybe in the near future, we will have something like that, a fully transparent mobile phone. So this is not yet uh, done. So how can we make these things possible? How? Very easy, by using metal oxide semiconductors. So we can use new materials or new semiconductors in order to realize these uh, devices and to be able to make this technology real, uh, real. So in fact, we are today in the presence of a new era of uh, electronic materials. And for example, like in a classroom, if we choose the good students, and for example, copper oxide, zinc oxide, and we try to avoid the bad ones, by using these oxi metal oxide materials, we are able to make transparent electronics. And in fact, we substitute in some way silicon, which is the conventional semiconductor used for making integrated circuits. We use copper oxide, zinc oxide, gallium oxide, indium oxide, tin oxide for making semiconductors. And why? Why these materials are so attractive? Because they present a low cost, they are biocompatible, they are recyclable, the technology for producing these materials is green, is not, is not polluting like the one used for, uh, used for conventional silicon, 
And also, they present superior electrical performance, for example, if we compare to what we are using today in our displays. As you know, a display needs to have a liquid crystal uh, film or some OLEDs, but we need to have pixels, and for each pixel we need to have a transistor. And the semiconductor used for that transistor is based on amorphosilicon, but they have this material has some disadvantages. And in that case, these oxides, they present superior electrical properties. So, in terms of the applications for this new technology or for transparent electronics, of course, the first one is related to the display industry, but we are not limited to the displays. We can use these, uh, this technology or these new materials for a wide variety of other applications. And since when we are dealing with something that is disruptive or it is completely new, even for us, it's a, a little bit uh, difficult to imagine or to realize where we can use all these uh, capabilities. But as you can see here, we are not limited to this place. We have a huge number of other possi possibilities. So, we have also some work with Samsung. We got the international patent uh, on that. And now I will switch to paper electronics. So, I thought... Uh, the first part was on transparent electronics. Now I will explain you and I will try to convince you how, what is paper electronics. And it's also very simple. It's the possibility to use conventional vegetal cellulose, co conventional paper, for electronic applications. And why we choose cellulose? Because, as you know, it's the Earth's major biopolymer, so we have a a resource available in the world. It's a material that is flexible, and for some applications, flexibility is a huge advantage. It's a cheap material. The technology is already available. We don't need to invent nothing. The paper was already invented by the Chinese uh, when, uh, 1,000 years ago. It's a good, has a good, uh, good dielectric property, so it's an insulator and also is recyclable. So paper is quite interesting, not only for packaging or writing. And when we are talking about ele electronics, maybe this type of images, or even in my, uh, the previous speaker, these images are very familiar to you. Electronics, okay, we associate electronics to this type of images. But also we are facing some problems with the conventional electronics. We are producing what we call the high-tech trash, because in some cases it's not possible to recycle all these, all these things. And also not only the electronics, but if we are think, uh, uh, thinking about the packaging industry, also we are polluting, especially, especially the oceans, with all these plastics around. And, of course, for example, this is just for you, uh, for, uh, for you to give you an idea about the international uh, electronic waste shipments where we are not solving the problem but we are reallocating this problem for other countries, especially for this part of the earth. And today we are used to e-books, e-journals, e-papers, e-readers. So the idea of e-paper is to substitute journals or cellulose from uh, an electronic device. In our case, it's exactly the opposite. We are trying to use, again, cellulose paper for electronic applications. And that's why we shift the E from left to right. Because instead of working with e-paper, we are, we are working with paper E. And what it is paper E, paper electronics? It's very easy. Paper works like the physical support and also as an active function in the device because we are now using paper for writing, so we need to have a physical support for the ink. Here, paper works like a physical support for our transistors, for our integrated circuits, but simultaneously has an active function on the device. So this is what we have done in 2008. So we have a, a cellulose a sheet of paper, 
which is dielectric, as uh, is an insulator, and on both faces of the paper we print a conductive material and on the other hand a semiconductor and we build a transistor. This is the easiest way to build a field effect transistor. And it works. So a transistor is like a switch on off. So here, for example, you can see this is a logarithmic scale where you, you have the current as a function of the gate voltage. But what you, saw, you can see here, we have a logarithmic scale. So it means that in the off region, the current available supplied by the device must be very, very low. And during the on switch, the current must be very high. So this is just what, how it works, the transistor. is a switch on, off. In the off state, the current is very low. On the on state, the current must be very high. And this value, the, the ratio must be as high as possible. So this is how they look like. It's still papers. Even we can functionalize the paper with some materials and turn on paper, an insulator paper on conducting paper. And also this is our last streams since we are working with transparent electronics in a, in a way. On the other way, we are working with paper electronics. Why not combine and have a transparent paper? And taking profit of nanotechnology, for example, we can develop some nanocellulose by, this is an example from uh, cellulose fibers from cotton, and here you can see a piece of uh, transparent paper, what it's called nanopaper. It's still cellulose, but simultaneously it's transparent because we are playing, the, f the fibers are much smaller. And also following the trend in the paper work, also we are uh, working on uh, microfluidic on paper. In fact, this work was uh, started in Harvard by Professor George Whitesides, where the main idea is to use low-cost, safe, disposable, rapid and self-sustainable paper-based platforms for uh, diagnostic testing. So our idea is to use very simple colorimetric uh, devices like pregnant tests and to try to democratize all these uh, diagnostic tests, tests for regions where nothing is available, unless the disease is. So this uh, uh, paper transistor got a huge interest around the world. Even I gave a lot of interviews for all these things. But of course, I would like just to finalize that this is not a, a self-woman work. This is a teamwork as we are doing. And I would like to thank, of course, the team that is supporting all this activity, as well as, okay, persons are quite important, but even without the, the funding of projects, we cannot realize, or we cannot materialize our dreams. And finally, I would like to thank you for your kind of attention, and to stay until the last session.